If you want to see an improvement in your thyroid function, your metabolism, adrenal glands, hormones, an improvement in your mood, then you must know about vitamin D. In this video, I'm going to talk about vitamin D, the common issues that people have with absorption and supplementation, and how vitamin D deficiency can impact us highly sensitive people. <laughs> Vitamin D deficiency is extremely prevalent. Signs and symptoms of a deficiency in vitamin D can present as a weakened immune system, bacterial overgrowth like candida, hormone imbalance, difficulties gaining muscle or losing weight, weak bones and teeth, so people with osteoporosis, chronic pain, muscle weakness and fatigue. Anyone diagnosed with arthritis or fibromyalgia and people who have ongoing aches and pains in the bones, also known as osteomalacia, definitely need to get their vitamin D levels checked. Depression can also indicate a shortage of vitamin D. And you can see that a lot of these symptoms are experienced by highly sensitive people. So raising awareness about vitamin D deficiency could possibly save us a lot of suffering. Although vitamin D has been called a vitamin, it also acts as a hormone. The reason why vitamin D is called the sunshine vitamin is because UV light converts cholesterol in our skin to vitamin D. And I think it's a relevant point to make regarding highly sensitive people because apparently 70% of us are introverts which means we tend to like to stay indoors. Maybe it's a generalization, but some of us do not like sunlight. We may feel overstimulated with too much bright sunlight. We may not like the sensation of sun on our skin. I know that's definitely the case for me. I've actually gone out of my way to avoid sunlight. I don't particularly like the feeling of sun on my skin. It might be really weird, but that's just how I've always been as a highly sensitive person. I'm really photosensitive. So I'm just sharing this with you because perhaps you too are a highly sensitive person who behaves this way. And this can contribute to us having a vitamin D deficiency. Also in relation to highly sensitive people, because we are more prone to experiencing stress whether it's real or whether it's perceived it doesn't matter the fight or flight has been activated so our cortisol is raised vitamin D and cortisol have the same receptor sites on our cells when we're highly stressed all those receptors will be filled with cortisol and therefore being highly stressed actually interferes with our ability to absorb vitamin D so if you've been on a vitamin D supplement and your levels are not rising it's either the supplement it's the form it's the dose or it's simply your body's inability to absorb so a lot of people take supplements and we read the label and it says 500 milligrams of this or that but what we don't realize it's not about what we eat what we supplement with but rather about what our body is absorbing so here are some great pointers to raise awareness of perhaps why you are not getting the effect that you need from your vitamin D. First of all, vitamin D, the form needs to be correct. So it's not D2, but it's D3. It's the D3 that's more readily absorbed, is much more potent, and has a greater ability to raise your blood levels. Vitamin D3 needs to be taken with vitamin K because K2 promotes absorption of calcium. So vitamin K2 in conjunction with D3 is responsible for proper calcium absorption and utilization. So this is the combo that's gonna help prevent bone loss and fractures. And just to clarify further about vitamin K, in case people get confused, vitamin K1 is the form that helps our blood to clot, whereas vitamin K2 is essential for the transportation of calcium from the wrong place to the right place. So if you have an insufficient form of vitamin K2, your body will present soft tissue accumulation of calcium so anywhere where calcium is building up like calcium plaques in the cardiovascular system atherosclerosis arterial plaque so vitamin k2 is extremely important to stop this accumulation of calcium because it distributes calcium to where it's meant to go
Vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, which means it needs to be taken with a meal. It has to be taken with fat so you can actually absorb it. So don't take it on an empty stomach. Certain chemicals like BPA can actually interfere with the vitamin D absorption. Bisphenol A is a common chemical found in plastics. Another reason why people may have trouble absorbing vitamin D is because of issues with their liver and specifically issues with bile production. You probably won't hear the term bile from a GP. It's commonly used by natural medicine practitioners. The significance of bile production is that bile acts as an emulsifier, which means it helps our body to break down fat. If your body, your liver is not producing enough bile, you're not going to be able to break down fat. So if you have liver toxicity, if you have issues with liver function, everything's going to be delayed, which will affect your vitamin D absorption and utilization. So no matter how much vitamin D supplementation you take, it may be ineffective until you address your liver function. Also people with dark skin and people who are obese will have issues with vitamin D absorption. People who are on a low fat diet, people who are on cholesterol reducing medications may also have issues simply because we need cholesterol to make vitamin D. Other health conditions that can prevent you from absorbing this vitamin include digestive issues such as Crohn's, celiac, inflammatory bowel disease. And let's also keep in mind the importance of kidneys because they are also involved in converting vitamin D to its active form. So if your kidney function isn't efficient, you may have trouble utilizing vitamin D. And a simple blood test can reveal where you are on the range of deficiency. So you want to be right in the middle of the reference range. When you have a look at your blood result, there should be a description of the reference range. So have a look at your number to see where you're at or ask your doctor to explain to you whether you are closer to the lower end or how far you are from the higher end. And vitamin D can be found in milk, cheese, in cod liver oil that has been the most popular source of vitamin D, vitamin A. It can be found in raw milk. And for those people who would prefer a more vegetarian vegan option, vitamin D can be found in chlorella and in mushrooms. Keep in mind, if you have a deficiency of vitamin D, no amount of food is gonna bring your levels up fast enough. And the longer that you are at the lower end, of the reference range, the greater the risk of your body giving you signs of breaking down and having all sorts of issues like I previously mentioned in the beginning. So when you identify a deficiency, you wanna correct it as soon as possible. Once you have corrected it and you're sitting nicely in the middle of that reference range, then you could probably maintain it with food. But initially, vitamin D deficiency requires supplementation. And as I've mentioned in my previous videos, I'm not for creating dependency on anything, but we need to be aware that perhaps sometimes short-term supplementation of nutrients, especially when we are in complete deficit and our body is showing us severe symptoms that we need to nourish our body and restore it to balance as soon as possible. So there is great value in supplementation. So I hope that some of these insights have given you a wider, more holistic perspective and helped you realize that sometimes it's not as simple as just popping a supplement. I hope you found that helpful and you've learned some new things about vitamin D and how it could help you. Mm -hmm.